I've had multiple people call me saying that the Daikin one has a communication error. And it's because they went through the whole commissioning process. Granted, it only takes like five minutes, so it's not that big of a deal. But they went through the whole commissioning process, set up the Daikin one controller for unitary products, but they had a VRV system installed. They didn't connect it to the internet. So when I asked, did you connect it to the Wi-Fi? No, there is no Wi-Fi at this job site. That's why you have a communication error. Hi everyone, I'm Dana and welcome back to Inverter Always. Now that the Daikin One has been out for just a couple of months for mini split and VRV systems, I've seen an uptick in calls from contractors wondering how does it get installed, but specifically how does the Daikin One get installed with that translation adapter, which is shipped with the Daikin One controller anytime you buy a Daikin One for mini split or VRV products. So in today's video, we're going to be going over the installation process. I just wanted to give you guys a few tips to make it easier, and we'll be identifying some of the critical components required to make sure your installation goes successfully. All right, let's jump right in. All right, you guys, so before we get into the actual installation process, I wanted to just quickly identify everything shipped with the Daikin One. That way you guys can familiarize yourselves with everything for the install. Now, you're gonna immediately notice when you open up the Daikin One kit that there is a card, little envelope that says welcome, and inside of that envelope, you're gonna have a few different installation cards. No, there is no installation instruction booklet but I personally found these cards helpful enough to get what I needed done. So the first card is gonna be installing the translation adapter and specifically connecting it to power. On the back side is the translation adapter installation portion. And then there's a smaller card that shows you how to actually install and mount the thermostat. On the back side of that card is gonna be how to commission your controller. Now. There are QR codes on each page of these cards, which will take you to the Daikin One website, give you more information in case these cards are not helpful enough. The other neat thing that is shipped is this little hanger card. And the idea with this is once the Daikin One is installed on the wall, you can go ahead and you can put this card on it. And I'm thinking that's gonna be great for like new construction where you're gonna install the Daikin One on your system, and then it's gonna sit there until a homeowner moves in. Well, when the homeowner moves in, they can see this card. This is gonna give them a link to download the app so that they can control the Daikin One on their phone. And then it also takes them to the Daikin One website where they can learn more information about their system. So I think this is a super helpful card that is shipped. I know that it's not uh, you know, a full-blown installation manual, but I think it gives us enough information to uh, get everything installed properly. Now, when you're opening up the box beyond that, the first thing you're gonna see, of course, is your Daikin One controller. What is neat about this on the back side of the controller, let's see if you can see it here, there's a QR code that gives you the part number, the serial number, all the information for this controller should you have problems in the future. And then the next thing you're gonna see is this big, huge honking translation adapter. This is your translation adapter. So in just a moment, we'll go through the actual installation process. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. So that way you guys know what I'm talking about. This guy's where you're gonna hook up all your wires to your indoor unit and down to your thermostat, P1, P2, and then that little white connector just below it is S21. And then you have your D1, D2, C, and R wires that will go to your Daikin One controller to power this translation adapter, you then have your line voltage wires, which is universal voltage 120 or 208, 230. So you can power it from the indoor unit. Yeah, that is extremely helpful. Now you're also gonna have this little mounting bracket with a built on level. And it is really hard to see the contacts on here. See if we can make that happen. You'll see the left-hand contacts. It says aux one and aux two. You can have two different auxiliary heater contacts plugged in. 
And then on the right hand side, you have data one, data two, C and R. That's your D1, D2, C and R. Now this little guy here is actually going to snap on to this bigger backplate. This bigger backplate is at the very bottom of the box. Really important that you remember to grab it because if you install your Daikin One controller without it, it's going to look very, very goofy. And as soon as you get this installed properly, it, the Daikin One snaps inside of it. It looks very, very nice and flush and intentional. Now there's also a cord that looks like this. It's got two little plugs on the end and that is called your S21 cable. So this is for mini splits. If you have a VRV system that plugs into P1, P2, you will need to provide your wire from the field. So this does not come with the Daikin 1. You will have to provide uh, that wire 18-2 stranded. You always want to use stranded with anything that's communication. And that's basically just because your communication travels on the outside of the wire. If you use thermostat wire for systems that are in the past non-communicating, uh, if you nick or break your wire, you lose your communication. So running stranded cable is just more reliable. Will it work with thermostat wire? Of course, unless you nick or break your wire, then you'll lose your communication. So I always recommend anything that is communicating, you always use stranded cable. Now, uh, there is a little 3M sticky back. You can use this if you want or not. That simply just goes to the back of your translation adapter. In the event you want to stick it to the cabinet of your indoor unit and not screw it down. It's pretty much everything that is shipped with the Daikin 1 kit. Uh, there is a set of screws as well. The last thing we're going to talk about here is your translation adapter connectors. So these three blue connectors here. They actually pop out, so if you're having a hard time getting your wire in, getting the connection made properly, you can actually pop out your connector, get your wire hooked up, and then snap this connector back into place. Definitely makes it a little bit easier. Also, there is a little black plug on your translation adapter. So this black plug here, you can actually pull that plug out. And you can see there, there are three LEDs. So you're going to have P1, P2 communication. That's your status LED at the top. Then the one in the middle is your S21 communication status. And then the one at the bottom is your power status. So once everything is installed and powered up, you can go back to your translation adapter and verify that you actually have communication. So it's a way to check your wiring is correct. Okay, let's go ahead and let's go through the actual installation process. So step number one is going to be mounting your translation adapter. Now to mount the translation adapter, you're going to need to remove the mounting bracket that's already snapped into the translation adapter shipped from the factory. And there's just a little tab here at the top that you unclip, pops right off. Now at this point, you can either use your 3M sticky back and connect this back plate to the side of the cabinet of your indoor unit or you can choose to use the provided screws and go ahead and screw this down. Regardless of which one you choose, go ahead and do that now, and then simply snap in your translation adapter when you're done. Now, I will give you one word of wisdom, and that is keep it upright. Your cover that snaps on has a label here at the bottom that says Daikin. So you need to make sure that it's installed correctly. If you install it upside down, then your cover is going to be upside down. You'll notice that the cover has one small opening. That is for one end, one big opening, plus one small opening. That's for the end that's got the line voltage wire. So you'll see here on the cover, this is a little bit harder to see, but it does have the logo, logo Daikin right there in the bottom corner. So when I installed mine, mine was in the attic. I installed mine so that it was this way. My cover is upside down, but no one's going to see it, so I don't care. But if you're installing the translation adapter in an area that is going to be viewable, you want to make sure that it at least looks good. So that's step number one. Get this sucker mounted. Step two is going to be hook up your line voltage wiring. Again, your line voltage wiring can be connected directly to the indoor unit, and it can be powered by either 120 or 208-230 volt power supplies. 
So for VRV products, I'll just plug the wires into L1, L2 of the indoor unit since those are already 208, 230 power. Uh, the gas furnaces are 120 volt power. So again, just plug it into the furnace. And then if you have mini splits, you can actually use leg one and two. Don't use leg three, it's just communication. So just like if you were installing a condensate pump on a wall mount mini split, you could use leg one and two for power, but you would never use leg three. Same thing goes here. You can use leg one and two if you'd like. The alternative would be simply wiring in a, a connector and hooking this up to an outlet, say maybe in the attic. So get your line voltage connected, and then we're gonna move on to step three. Step three is connect all of your communication wiring. So again, you're gonna have two options going to your indoor units, P1, P2, and then the white connectors, S21. If you're connecting to S21, just remember you are limited to five and a half feet. This can't be cut and extended or shortened. You get what you get. If you are using P1, P2 on the other hand, you can accommodate up to 100 feet of field supplied wire. So if you don't wanna see this on your wall mount and you have a VRV wall mount, go ahead and remote locate it up to 100 feet. Now, once you have your indoor unit wired to the translation adapter, the last step is going to be connecting your four wires from the translation adapter down to the Daikin 1 thermostat. Again, that is D1, D2, C, and R. It's really important that you run D1 to D1 of your mounting bracket, D2 of the translation adapter down to D2 of the mounting bracket, C to C, and R to R. If you crisscross those wires, then your Daikin 1 is not going to work. Once all of your wiring is complete and your mounting bracket is properly installed to the wall with your decorative back plate, at this point, you are pretty much done. You're ready to go ahead and connect your Daikin 1 thermostat. So go ahead and snap that in. And now we can go ahead and we can power up the equipment. As far as the installation goes, you guys, as long as you make sure you have all of your wires landed properly, from the indoor unit down to the translation adapter and then from the translation adapter down to the Daikin 1. It really isn't too complicated and it really shouldn't take you that long. The one biggest thing that I can't stress enough is make sure you have that Daikin 1 connected to Wi-Fi before you go through all the commissioning steps. I've had multiple people call me saying that the Daikin 1 has a communication error and it's because they went through the whole commissioning process Granted, it only takes like five minutes, so it's not that big of a deal. But they went through the whole commissioning process, set up the Daikin 1 controller for unitary products, but they had a VRV system installed. They didn't connect it to the internet. So when I asked, did you connect it to the Wi-Fi? No, there is no Wi-Fi at this job site. That's why you have a communication error. So what you need to make sure you do is connect it to the local Wi-Fi. If there is no local Wi-Fi, connect it to your hotspot. If you don't have a hotspot or if you're in an area with bad cell reception, then power up the Daikin 1 from your office. Remember that translation adapter can be powered with 120 volts. So wire a little plug to the end of that power cord, plug it into the wall, run four short wires from the translation adapter down to the Daikin 1, power it up, get it to the point where you can connect it to your local Wi-Fi, get the software downloaded, and then take it out to the job site and install it. At least that way you can make sure that the system is fully operational. And yes, at some point in the future, the homeowner may need to then connect their Daikin 1 to their local Wi-Fi at their convenience to get any of the latest features updates. But simply just to get it running, remember your Daikin 1 may not have S21 mini split software or VRV software even installed. So you need to make sure you get it connected to the internet. Now this video is not gonna be showing you how to do that. We actually already did a video showing you how to connect the Daikin 1 controller to Wi-Fi. So I'll go ahead and I'll put a card for that video up at the top now if you need to check it out. Well guys, that's pretty much it for today. Like I said, there isn't a whole lot involved with the installation process. I just wanted to give you guys a few pointers based on what I've seen and some of the feedback I've gotten from the field over the last couple of months since the controller has been out. If you guys have any questions at all, if you have any ideas for future videos that you want to put in the comments below, please do. 
And of course, if you enjoyed the video, please click the like button below. It really helps out the channel. If you've been watching a few of these videos and you're enjoying what you're seeing, please make sure you click that subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. And of course, make sure you click that notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any future content. Thank you so much for watching Inverter Always. I hope you have an awesome day.